الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی علیہ و صحبہ و سلم مبعد It's absolutely imperative for us as Muslims to follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and never be fearful of those people who try to persecute or blame us or go against the correct creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf al And it is absolutely a must that Muslims advise one another and correct and help and support one another. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Adina Nasiha. He said, The religion is sincere advice. So, to begin, we have to look at something very important here. And this is the statement of a man who recently passed, Abdullah. Al-Hariri Al-Habashi, known as Abdullah Al-Hariri from Harir, who lived in Lebanon, who was the head of a group, a sect in Islam. And for those of you that are part of the sect, you need to listen about what your leader said. I'm going to get, I'm going to read exactly what he said. Then you be the judge. I'm not going to speak bad about him, but I want you to be the judge, and you weigh that in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al what did Abdullah al Hariri say? In many of his books, he spoke about the uh, Al Asma wa Sifat. He spoke about the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in one of his books, entitled Shara Sifat al Thalath, uh, Thalath al Ashar, he said, he said, in after uh, speaking extensively about the uh, what he believes Ahl Sunnah to be upon, which goes against what the Madhab of Ahl Sunnah, he said that regarding the the that people had the groups had split into various sects and groups, and at the end of his statement he said, "Wa Ahl Sunnah wasat bina dinka farikain, wuhum lakabu al ashariya." والماتريدية لأنهم اتبعوا أمامي الهدى أبا حسن العشري وأبا منصور الماتريدي سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله رضيم This man said that after discussing some of the various ways in which the Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه was split and divided regarding the concept of Al-Asma'i wa Sifat he said, Ahl Sunnah is wasit. This is true. Ahl Sunnah is in the middle. And it's in the middle between these two uh, sects. As he, he mentioned and he described how some he described as making a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his creation. And some he said they are the mu'attala, meaning they negate the uh, sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ahl Sunnah is wasit. And that... In that aspect of his statement, it's true. Then he went on to say, there, there was it, they're in the middle between those two extremes, or those two uh, divisions. And he said, and they are called by name Al-Ash'ariya, Al-Maturidiya. Because they follow two great Imams, these Imams of guidance, Abu Hassan Al-Ash'ari, Wa Aba Mansur Al-Maturidi. Subhanallah, these ulama and Abu Hassan al-Ashari, uh, he left that madhab. And he, as the ulama make uh, clarified for us, and when we look at his books, you'll see Thalatha Marahil, that he had three different divisions with regards to his creed and his changing and the things that influence him. And at the end of his life, he made toba from that uh, creed which is known today as Ash'ariya because in fact this was not inexistent during the time of the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'een This is something you won't find substantiated 
by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and it's according to their aql, to their intellect, they built their creed. And instead of referring to the Sahaba, for example, if you're going to start a new sect or a new group, and you want a new hizb, you want a new name, why not go call yourself the the Umariya, you know, after Umar bin al-Khattab, or the Khattabiyya? Or why not call yourself the Afaniya, after Uthman bin Affan, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma? Or why not call yourself the uh, Abi Talib, Ali Abi, Abi Talib Firqa, or something like this, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and go after, or, or the Siddiqeen, or something similar to this, because they were the best of this Ummah, as is, as even Habashi should have known, because he had extensive, or he at least wrote extensively regarding Hadith. But instead he chose to say that these two Imams of Guidance were, and, and they chose to follow their creed and take on their laqab, their name, as if they are Ahl Sunnah. But where does this leave the four Imams of the Fuqaha, like Abu Hanifa? And where does this leave Imam Malik? And where does this leave Imam Shafi'i? Where, where does this leave Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Jami'an? Where does this leave those great Imams who did not share in this creed that Al Habashi? had. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَلَّذِينَ تَفَرَّخُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا He said, and do not be like those people who have divided and separated into groups. وَقَالْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَرَّخُوا دِينُهُمْ وَكَانَ شِيْعًا لَسْتَ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ That he said, and verily those who have divided their religion and have become sects, then there's nothing less than minhum shay. That there's nothing, uh, they have no substance. There's nothing to them. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَإِنَّ هَذَا صَلَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ فَاعْتَبِعُوا وَلَا تَعْتَبِعُوا سُبُورٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and verily this is my straight path. This wasn't Abdullah Heredi's straight path. This is Allah's straight path. So we have to follow the kitab and the sunnah in accordance the way it was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadha salati mustaqeem if a'tabi'u wa la ta'tabi'u subuh. That verily this is my straight path. Then follow it. And do not follow the subuh, the various paths, those other ways that lead you astray. Because there's only one salati mustaqeem. There's only one straight path. And that is the path of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah takes the creed from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. It takes a creed, aslan, from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where the Prophet ﷺ told us, and first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that he, uh, ar-Rahman ala ar just accept that he rose above his throne. Accept it. Don't negate it. Don't make it like his creation. Don't make a likeness or a resemblance. Just accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne because he said it in seven places in the Qur'an. And the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, وَيَنزُلُوا رَبَّنُوا تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَلَىٰ كُلُثُ اللَّهِ اللَّيْلَ الْآخِرِ He said, and our Lord, He descends to the lowest heaven the last third of the night. We don't ask how. As Imam Malik said when, when asked about اَسْتَوَى uh, لَا arsh, About rising above the throne. He said, اَسْتَوَى مَعْلُونَ He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose, and that's مَعْلُونَ, that's known. وَكَيْفِيَا مَجْهُولُ Or كَمَا قَالَ Imam Malik and how is unknown. Meaning we, we affirm what Allah affirms about Himself and what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirms about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in authentic hadith literature. That's the minhaj and methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the most uh, concise or, or very short, hopefully precise statement that we affirm what Allah affirms, we negate what Allah negates. We affirm what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed, and we negate what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam negated. That's surat al-mustaqeem. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَتَسْمُ بِأَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعِينَ وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا And hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah, meaning the Qur'an and the Sunnah, as the Mufassireen explain. وَأَتَسْمُ بِأَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِعِينَ All of you together. And la ta wala ta faraku. And do not divide. Don't divide. There's no need to call yourself Habashi. There's no need to call yourself Ashari. There's no need to call yourself Sufi. There's no need to call yourself 
Maturidiya. There's no need to call yourself Nakshabandiya or whatever uh, tariqa that you want to embrace. Just em embrace the madhab of the Salaf. That's sufficient. Embrace the madhab of the Firqa Tanajia. As the Prophet Sallallahu Mansura. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi explained to us in authentic hadith. We have that. We have that listen from the from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yuladina Amanu Atiullah wa Ati Rasul, wa ulul amri min kum fin tanazatum fi shain, for a do will Allah you rasuli, and kuntum tu minuni bilahi wan yom lahan, barikum khairun, wa asanu ta'wila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, follow Allah and his messenger. And those who are in charge of uh, uh, an authority uh, over you. And if you do disagree over something, because we surely disagree over something, for a will Allah you are then take it back to Allah and His Messenger. In kuntum tu'minun billah. That is if you believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. And that is a better and more suitable for final determination. That's why we should take our affairs back to the Quran and the Sunnah. Can you find evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you should negate that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rose above His throne or that you should make ta'wil, that you should change the meaning and say Estola instead of Estola or that you should say uh, that such and such, that His hand Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as Allah says He has, that they, they mean power no, just leave it. Allah said what He said about Himself. Subhanahu, we affirm that. And leave it. And we don't make tashbih of His creation. We don't say, Allah has hands, we have hands, and they're like this or like this. No, we don't know the kafiya. We know in reality, Allah has hands as He said He has hands. And we leave it at that. We affirm it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms it for Himself. We are not in a position. We're humble, limited creatures. We, we cannot explain things which we don't have knowledge to speak about. We don't have knowledge about that. So leave it. Leave it as, as the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam affirmed it. And that's how we can return our affairs back to Allah wa Rasul. And the Prophet wasallam said, Man an sunnati minni. He said, whoever refuses my Sunnah, then he's not from me. And the Prophet wasallam said, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِسَعْمِ وَطَاعَ وَإِنْ عَبْدٍ هَبَشِيًا وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَرَى اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةَ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ أَذُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَادِجْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْتَثَنَ الْأَمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ There's no bid'ah hasanah. The Prophet said it. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating it and trying to follow it to my limited ability. I didn't do it. If you have a problem, فَرَدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ The Prophet ﷺ said in that hadith, he said, Fear Allah, اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسَعْمِ وَطَاعِ And it's upon you hearing and obeying the Muslim ruler. وَإِنْ عَبْدٍ حَبَشِيًا Even if he was an Ethiopian slave. وَإِنُوا مِنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِ So those people who live after the Prophet ﷺ, فَسَيَرَى اخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا They will find many disagreements. How many groups do we have now? How many? The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, If tarakat al-Yahud al-Ahtu wa sabayin firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara al-Ahtu wa sabayin firqa, wa sa taftariku hadhi umma al-Tarata wa sabayin firqa, kullaha fin nara wa wahida. The Prophet ﷺ said that the Jews will break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, and my umma into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. Man hi um ya Rasulullah, or kama qala al-Sahabi, al-Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in, qalu, قالوا من من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وصحابي they ask oh who are they يا مسجد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said those who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions today the point being that we have to follow the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we return our affairs back to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم we're ahl sunnah we're not ahl ahbash so don't take yourself, don't make new names. We're not Ahla, we're not the Ashaira. We're not the Maturidiyah. Because if you dare say the Sahaba were Ashari, or the Sahaba were Maturidiyah, I'm not making tech fear of you, but you better be cautious about making claims like that. It's a very serious statement. It's a very serious statement. And the Prophet ﷺ said, 
So the one who lives after me, as we see the many differences. And then he gave us the prescription. Then it is upon you my sunnah. And the rightly guided Khulafa uh, Rashidin, meaning Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and whom Ajma'in, not uh, Abi Mansur al uh, Maturidi, or uh, Abi Hassan al Ash'ari. That, that, that isn't whose Sunnah we're supposed to follow. And he, those individuals were not from the Khulafa Rashidin. So even if we see all these great Imams of the Sunnah throughout time, because the Prophet ﷺ let us know that we're gonna, they're going to be, the Sunnah is always going to be Mawjud until the end of time. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that there are always, there won't cease to be uh, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظارين الحق حتى يأتيهم أمر وهم على ذلك وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم there won't cease to be a, a nation a, a group from my ummah on the truth and even if people tried to harm them and deceive them or or differed with them they would remain on the truth that's in one in one narration so that lets us know على سنة موجود the imams of the سنة موجود but even with that, we still, because everyone can make mis- everyone makes mistakes and everyone is correct, as the great imams themselves said. And we're going to look at some of their statements really quickly. And that lets us know that we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet We don't need to call ourselves new names. names. I don't need to call myself Hanbali. Okay? Maybe your orientation and your fiqh is Hanbali. But if you follow Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal, or Imam Abu Hanifa, or Imam Malik, or Imam Shafi'i, any of those four Imams, then you'll be on the same creed. Your creed will not differ. Some minor issues of uh, of Imam Abu Hanifa with regarding to Imam, I- Imam, with faith. But other than that, you'll find the Imams were on the creed of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu, of the Salaf Asari. That's what we're ordered to follow. And we're not ordered to follow any one of them blindly. Imam Shafi'i said, "Ajma'u Muslimun, ala anna man istaban lahu sunna an Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam lam yuhalla lahu an yadaha li qawli ahad." Imam Shafi'i himself, rahimahullah taala, said, "The Muslims have consensus that whoever, if the sunnah becomes clear to him, to him." The Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then it is not permissible for him to leave it for the statement of anyone, even Abdullah Hariri. Imam Shafi didn't say Abdullah Hariri, but I'm adding that to make our point that anyone, no matter what, I don't care if it's Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, I don't care if it's Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, I don't care if it's uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, I don't care who it is. We can't leave it if we know the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it and it's it's become clear that it's a Sahih statement. We take that statement and we leave what the other people say. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself said, Kulu ibn Adam khayran All the children of Adam make mistakes, except we, we all make mistakes. But the best of those who make mistakes is those who make who repent. Qali Imam Malik, Imam Malik said, Men ibtada. في الإسلام بدعة يراها حسنة فقد زعم أن محمد خان رسالة That is a beautiful statement by Imam Malik. So why do all those, so many people in this day and age who consider themselves Malikiyah, they follow Imam Malik in his fiqh, but they don't follow his aqidah. That's gharib. And they'll, they'll say Imam Malik was Maturidiyah or Ash'ari or something like this. And they, <laughs> Subhanallah, la yumkin. La Yumkin, his statements contradict that. What did Imam Malik say, Rahimullah Ta'ala said? He said, Whoever innovates in Islam, Imam Malik said, so this it also makes uh, it, it makes it battle or it nullifies the people who say there's a bidah hasan in bidah hasan. Except for in the law as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala mentioned. That's related to in the language. 
But it has nothing to do with in the deen. In the deen, there's nothing new that you can add to it. Here's what Imam Malik said, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, whoever innovates in Islam, a bid'ah, and he thinks that it is hasan, then he has claimed that Muhammad has cheated in the message. A'udhu billah min dhalika. Because when you make something new in the religion, for example, celebrating the Prophet's birthday, or even the bid'ah of the Asha'ira and, and, and uh, these other people who nullify the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because in fact they are they fall into uh, being mu'atala. Even uh, uh, Habashi himself, he spoke against the mu'atala. At the same time, he fell into their mistake. Because when he makes ta'wil of those sifat, he's actually making, uh, he's making, he's nullifying their meaning and giving them a new meaning which the Arabic language has no doesn't show nor does the shara show this meaning so when they make new meanings then in fact they're making a bid'ah and when you make a bid'ah it is as if you're claiming that Muhammad وسلم, didn't complete the message or it, it wasn't quite good enough because I need to explain it this way or I need to change this practice this way if the Prophet ﷺ didn't celebrate his birthday, for example, or he didn't call the dead, he didn't call those people, the NBL before him, his Sahaba didn't call upon him when he was dead, وسلم, then why would we need to istighath bi ghayrillah? Why would we need to call and supplicate and, 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 and be humble and, 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 and make dua to other than Allah? Why? Why would we knew that? do this? That's a bid'ah, bid'ah mukaffara, bid'ah that can take you out of the fold of Islam or takes you out of the fold of Islam. And there are many, many statements from the Salaf Asari regarding this, and we're going to end with a statement of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu taala anhu qal, "Khatta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam khattan tuma qala, 'Hada sabilullah.'" ثم خط خطوط عن يمينه وعن شماله ثم قال هذه سبل متفرقة على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو إليه ثم قرأ وأن هذه سرات مستقيم فاعتبئوا ولا تعتبئوا سبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله In this hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was narrated by Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه He said that the Prophet the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم made drew a line uh, then he said, this is the Sabil Allah, this is the path of Allah. Then he drew a line on the right and he drew a line on the left. And he said, then those are the different paths. And on every one of those paths, there is a devil calling to it. And then the Prophet ﷺ read the ayat, وَإِنَّ هَذِ الصَّرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاعْتَبِئُوا وَلَا تَعْتَبِئُوا سُبُولٍ فَتَفَرَقُوا بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ then the Prophet ﷺ read the ayat in the Qur'an where Allah Taala says, And verily this is my straight path. Then follow it. And do not follow the other paths that are dividing uh, to other other ways and other methodologies. Subul, other paths. So we have to ask ourselves with sincerity. And we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and forgiveness in these affairs. That if it were correct to be Ashri, or Maturidi, or Habashi, Habashi meaning the Firqa, we're not talking about the people, the Qom, we're not making racist statements about our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia, as there are so many people from Asunda there, as they are in China, as they are in America, as they are in the UK and, and Canada and wherever else in the world, Walillah and Hamd. So we have to ask ourselves, if that's the straight path, then why is it so many ways that it differs from the Sabila law and the Sabila Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all these practices we don't find from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but in fact we find this from later generations why is it that we don't find the Salaf al doing these things celebrating the birthdays calling on the dead uh, saying uh, supplicating to those people who can't help them and calling themselves new names like Maturidiyya or Ashari or, or, or whatever or Habashi, Jamaat al-Ahbash, Jamaat al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Jamaat al tabliq whatever it is. Why Why don't we see that? And I'm telling you that if it became clear to me that one of those paths came from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and the Salaf al I would be the first to join it because I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hellfire. And so I ask you to ask yourself, make dua to Allah. 
that if what I'm saying is, is, is not true, and it is going against the Quran and the Sunnah, that it becomes clear for me, and that Allah protects you from it. And if what I'm saying is true, then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you. Open your chest to Allah, because Allah, in the end we're all going to be responsible for Allah, on what we propagated in this life. If we started a new jama'at, or a new group, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that we were breaking the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. So you want to be in that one, the one that is embracing the Qur'an, that they use the Qur'an as their foundation, and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is their foundation, and the understanding of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, as their foundation, and those who follow them until the Day of Judgment. That's what you want as your foundation. You don't want to fall into some stuff, some shady practices. You don't want to follow in, fall into stuff that we, the people who came before us, for those people who, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever resembles a people, then he is from them. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet ﷺ said you would follow the people who came before you step by uh, handprint by handprint arm span by arm span or footprint by footprint ha, ha, even until they entered the hole of a lizard you would follow it and then the companions they said who are they Ya Messenger of Allah or they said the Jews and the Christians Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he said who else and in another hadith it made clear for us that this was also in the context that we would follow the ummas, the nations before us in shirk. This is one of the ways we would follow. We would even return to shirk. And isn't that what it is when we supplicate to the dead? Even if we, even if we believe that it's okay, even if we be, we know the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, they have they're in uh, in jannah, and they have the hayat barzakhiyah and the shuhada, the martyrs, and so forth. Yes, we affirm that, as Allah affirms it for us, because that's what Allah affirms. That's what the Prophet ﷺ gave us tafsil about, about the martyrs, that they are in the, in the souls of green, uh, little green birds, that their souls are in the, in, in the green birds. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We affirm that. But that is Hayat Barzakhiyah. And that doesn't necessitate making dua to them, asking them to carry your dua, or to the Sariheen. That's not from Islam. That contradicts everything that the Qur'an and the Sunnah came with. Go back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. There's so many ayats to show us that that is shirk. That's what the pagan Arabs used to do. They used to go to their, their statues and they say, la ya'buduhum illa li yukarabuna illallahi zulfa. We don't worship, la na'buduhum. We don't worship them except that they bring us closer to Allah. That's what they said. Isn't that exactly what the people today are saying who go to the graves and and pray to the, the saints or make tawaf around their graves? They say they're in Hayat Barzakhiyah or we're only doing this because we need, we're need we not clean enough to bring our dua to Allah. How the, this is what the Pope, this is what their religion shows, you know, repenting to the Pope, repenting to the priest. That's not what Islam told us. We don't need intercessors. Our intercessor comes in the Yom al Qiyamah, it comes in the hereafter as well. With the Prophet ﷺ in the hereafter, not in this life. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who asked Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.